most shows don't deal in flashback as much as we do. But they rightly came up with the idea that in order to tell this story and put this puzzle together and go in and out of time, that was an essential part of the storytelling of this series. The flashbacks to me and the mythology are what made it a series, you know? What made it a movie was incredible plane crash, production values, great cast, great story within that two hours. What made it a TV show were the flashbacks. When you think about how to keep this show alive for, for more than one season, if you were to only tell the story of these people's lives on the island, obviously the time scope is compressed and the storytelling becomes very narrow and you want to get to know these characters and who they are. When the idea for focusing on a character and telling a backstory through each episode was, was thrown on the table, that was the aha moment. The Twilight Zone was always my favorite show, and doing that kind of storytelling over an hour really didn't work. Even The Twilight Zone itself tried the hour-long format for one season and went back to the half hour, because it's sort of too long to sort of protract a storyline like that. And so one of the advantages of doing the flashback sort of structure on Lost is it allows us to sort of do a story that for half of the hour is essentially a story that could be a Twilight Zone-esque kind of story without requiring it to last for a full hour. It also allows us to do a weird thing, which is, you know, we get to know more about the characters than the other characters do. So that's sort of a rare thing, I think, to sort of find a way to tell stories where we're actually learning more about some of these people than the other people in the show. Well, part of the conceit um, was that there was this group of people who essentially were more lost in their past lives than they are in their present lives now that they're really lost. And that's something, you know, Damon and JJ have talked about. It's a great metaphor for people. Hey, hey, you come near me and my wife again, I will hunt you down. We felt we needed a lot of conflict within the groups. And in those early conversations, I think we, you know, tended to have it be much more arch in the, you know, conflict between the characters. There would be very clear, you know, two camps and kind of a Lord of the Flies scenario. But as the writing developed and it became, clear that the characters, you know, were taking on a life of their own and a reality of their own. And in their flashbacks, there was an ability to expand the storytelling. We felt that it didn't need to be as conflict heavy as in the initial conception. So it has, has become, I think, more organic. Getting in and out of the flashbacks, how are we gonna do that? You know, we decided directorially and creatively we didn't want to do gimmicks, we didn't want to do video wipes, we didn't want to do tricks, we didn't want the flashbacks to be black and white, we didn't want the flashbacks to have an obvious different look. Every story is different. This show is very cool in that every chapter of this novel called Lost can be a little bit different. And I came up with the idea with Larry Fong, the DP then, to not do any camera moves in the flashbacks, that all the flashbacks would be wider lenses closer. And that on the island, what we were beginning to do, which we took the lead from JJ and Larry and what they did in the pilot, which was very long lensy, a lot of camera movement, creeping cameras, so that the island has this kind of bubbling mystery visually, and you fall back wide when you need to see big stuff. So it came up with a concept that in flashbacks, I said, let's keep all the green out of the flashbacks visually if we can. Let's keep blue out of the flashbacks in terms of wardrobe because the colors you mainly see on the island are green and blue, just subconsciously for the audience. And let's continually surround the, the characters in flashback with backgrounds that we can see, meaning less long lenses. Like we put that one scene where Locke is playing the game. It was written originally in his, in his apartment. We moved it to the break room where we could put those vending machines. So that jerk manager in the office walks in, sticks a buck in, which our characters can't do on the island. The money's not gonna do them any good. You know, there are no vending machines. So let's surround our characters in flashback with all the things they no longer have that they're stripped of. The island is, of course, the most mysterious aspect of the show, and we are always sort of struggling with the issue of how much mythology should we have in a given episode and how much of these things do we set up and how many of them do we pay off. I'm not looking. The process of working on Lost has been sort of simultaneously dealing with the mysteries of what the island is and asking the questions that the characters are asking and also examining who they are. 
the sort of the goal in, in a way is that all the human condition is evidenced by the, these different characters and they're all, you know, their, their experiences and how they all come together as a group to share this one sort of giant question. Guys, where are we? Where is Alex? Shock. The French woman is a very integral part of the mythology of the, of the series and her experiences on the island and, you know, the mystery of her child, Alex, who's missing and her knowledge about the others and the infection uh, are all things that, you know, are going to play a huge part in the mythology in, in mythology episodes in, in season two and in the overarching story for season two. By the end of season one, it's a big introduction. Here's who they are. Here's what makes them tick. Here's what they were doing in Australia. Here's why they were flying to L.A. You know so much more about the people. And I think that in season two, we're going to continue to explore their pasts and certainly tell more sort of stories, but it's not going to be so much about the mystery of them as it is about things that sort of make them who they are. But the show will f sort of focus more on the exploration of the island. Now that they've been here for 40 days and they've made a couple attempts to get off the island and for whatever reasons they're not going anywhere, they're, they're going to enter sort of more an exploratory phase in terms of, all right, now we have to find out more about this place that we're on and who else might be on it with us. The audience that watches the show regularly is getting pieces of a mosaic that will be revealed over the life of the show. And with each episode, we add new sort of tiles to the mosaic. and. It is part of an overall plan picture of answering the questions of what the mysteries are of this island and this place and of these characters. In terms of like prop selection, like when Sawyer's reading a book, like those books are very specifically sort of picked out and the names of the characters are sort of very intentional and what we decide to show you in each other's flashbacks in terms of when their stories cross with each other is absolutely intentional. We're constantly looking to change up the audience's expectations and, and not allow people to feel kind of comfortable or complacent about where the show is going. Yet at the same time, we're, we're hopefully going to dish out enough answers that people don't get frustrated with it.